Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for bout number two of the evening. Please welcome Ernesta Bukowskate. And as she makes her way down the fighter's entrance, the crowd really loving this one, Dean. An incredible atmospheric night of mixed martial arts, but it is also time for a very first year, a world first on Brad Pickett's Rise of Champions, Ernesta Bukhaus, KT, 1-0, Britain, by way of Lithuania, an excellent, excellent 24-year-old, top-notch mixed martial artist. She was an under-14 British kickboxing champion, and Dean, she holds a win over her opponent, which should make this a very interesting rematch here tonight. Anesta has worked, as we know, on her striking skills. They're gonna come to Paramount in this transition to MMA. She's really worked on connecting the dots, Chris, between the striking and then the grappling realm, because that is a skill in itself. So she's really confident that she's able to put them together. And with her judo background, she's a judo champ, Chris, so she's comfortable with the grappling situation. She just needs to connect the dots. And she believes she's done that in the gym and she's gonna come and get the win again. Slight edge also on the heart department. So that makes it very interesting when she can control the clinch as a judoka and dictate the pace with her kickboxing. And her opponent, please welcome Chloe Spiteri. <laughs> And Chloe Spiteri, the team Titan fighter, unsuccessful in her contest against Ernesta last time around. 26 years old, current team Great Britain and XS, British championship level wrestler. I think it's no surprise as what she needs to do against the taller, longer, rangier fighter here tonight. Chloe has worked on getting that low start to see if she employs that when she comes out to get under the punches, to not be at range and eat the kicks in. She wants to get low. Think about Tyson in the striking realm. He's able to get inside, in the pocket, land those powerful shots. We know she's got power in her right hand and the left hook is beautiful to watch as well. And it's always interesting when you think about that to set up the takedown, Dean. That's an important aspect of that approach. To be on the inside and be able to put your strikes in to dictate the pace and more importantly, make your opponent think you're doing something else and then go to the takedown is imperative in MMA as we know. But she's got to watch the hips of Ernesta. Having that judo background, if you allow her hips to connect to yours, to get behind yours, you're gonna go for a ride. And that's what makes this also fascinating too. As you see young fighters grow, as you see young fighters mature, they've got to be able to ramp it up a level with the pressure on, the bright lights shining. We're filming here live tonight. You've got Brad One Punch Pickett in the wheelhouse. And now it is time to make history here in The Rock. Chloe and Ernesta are both in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for three three-minute rounds in the amateur cat wage bout at 63 kilograms. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She stands five feet nine inches tall and weighed in officially at 61.9 kilograms. She has an amateur record of one win with no losses, no draws. Fighting out of and representing Gym Task Combat, she is Ernesta Bukowskate. And her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet six inches tall and weighed in officially at 62.9 kilograms. She has an official record of zero wins with one loss, zero draws. Representing and fighting out a team titan, she is Chloe Spiteri. <laughs> when the action begins, your referee in charge, Daniel Mobahedi. Chloe Spiteri in the rematch here tonight against Ernesta Bukaus KT. Bukaus KT with the W the last time around. And we will get a second chance here between these two. 
to also mark a feature first at Rise of the Champions. Beautiful switching scissor technique there, jumping in from Bukowski. Katie. Anesta using that range, the longer of the two. On the outside, very good, nice kick. She's looking for that lead kick. As well as a check left hand there to try and counter, no doubt, the efforts of Chloe Spiteri to close the distance, move inside, try and probe her way in. And you can see right now Spiteri knows the jab, as far as the distance goes, is not on her side. So she's showing lots of little hand movements, but I think Dee needs to be able to enter not in such a predictable manner because she's gonna run into straight punches just like that. Yeah, shot, tasted the power, didn't like it. She's coming in for that takedown, off nothing. She used to set him up, put strikes, decisive strikes, because it's really important. Chloe, you see who's on the back, she'll step back every time she strikes. She needs to come in, move her head off the center line and land something decisive, perhaps an overhand right. At the moment, she's giving Ernesta the distance she needs to fire off at will. And Ernesta locked up behind that jab doing a great job there of trying to punch with basic stuff. Ones and twos. And again, switching up in midair there. Lovely techniques there from Bukas County. But again, the moment she realizes that space is not on her side, out comes number one. Out comes the jab. And I like how she keeps her elbow tight when she throws that technique as well, Dean. Anesta. Nice tight guard, looking for that right hand. As she circles off to the left, she fires that right hand beautifully. You see now Chloe start to move her head. That's exactly what she needs to do. Move the head, come in with a jab, and set up with that right hand. More hand fighting, but it's the kicks that are certainly most flashy from Ernesta. Longer jab there for Chloe. Ernesta gauging, I love the way she gauges that, that rear leg out to, for the distance. She goes to the leg and to the stomach. It tells her how close she is and what she can fire off. And it's almost a throwaway strike, Dean, right? It's not one that's really meant to hit hard or cause any significant. But it certainly aids her in her measurements of distance and space, and more importantly, timing. Again, beautiful stuff there. I like the fact that you noticed earlier, Dean, the headline moving off the center for Chloe Spiteri. At the moment, she's, she's got sent a cage, Chris, but she's eating all those shots on the outside. She's given the exact distance that Ernesta needs to fire off what she wants and rack up points. But at some point, she did start to move her head a little bit more and be a slight less unpredictable, I would say. I'm hoping that's a seed in the back of her mind. And when she goes into the corner, her cornermen are going to water that seed and it's going to come fruitful in the fight. She needs to think about moving her head off the center line and throwing some decisive strikes because if she sits on the outside, Anesta again is just gonna fire off. The action continues here during this female mixed martial arts contest at 63 kilograms. Round two coming right up. Round two of a schedule three. Three minutes on the clock. Chris Hookster alongside Dean Manhattan again the left kick, but now the chance and the opportune moment for Chloe. Oh, Anessa's jumped on that guillotine. Chloe needs to start defending her neck. Like she's there, see she's got both hands. Oh, now she's working the punches to soften up the leg, but she really needs to think about two on one. Get two of her hands on one of Anessa's and break her head free from that position. Swap into the 100 percenter here to counter the head outside single. And now Ernesta back fishing for the knack. Interesting series of exchanges here, Dean. Ernesta doing the right thing. She's squeezing her hips back to the cage to keep her center of gravity low. Chloe is using these knees to soften up, but at this point in time, she needs to think about securing that single leg, Chris, and moving her head away from that guillotine. Head outside attack here for Spiteri, and now she's looking up here to try and free some space, and more importantly, get that lever out that Ernesto is using to stay on her feet, Dean. She's looking for that hip bump. What Chloe will do is bump the hips into the cage and try and suck the hips away of Ernesto. She switches to the single leg again, giving up her neck. She needs to get nice and low and tuck her head in flush with the body of Ernesto and not leave it to that right side. Too static a position here for the gentleman. 
the third man in the ring, Daniel Movahidi. And this would certainly be an advantage now for Ernesto, who likes to dictate this really at two steps out at kicking distance, Dean. Now, if Chloe can disguise her punches and kicks and use it to change levels and get a takedown, Ernesto might end up on her back in this fight. But Chloe needs to go forward, punches in bunches, keep her hands nice and high. Ernesto with that jab, nice lead kick, misses. Chloe gauging the distance a bit better. She's able to go backwards a little bit better, but if she can start to employ lateral movement, Chris, left to right, she's gonna have more success because she'll have a different angle on her opponent. She's and not just right, right in front of her. And changing the angle was something that we noticed earlier. For example, in round one. But right now, Ernesta on the bike, fleeting whenever she notices a retreat is necessary to be able to control this fight via her own game plan. And I think that's smart fighting from her. Chloe again, she's starting to parry these strikes away, but she needs to put something on the end of it. She's gonna parry the punch, or indeed the kick. She needs to throw her own strikes off that. She needs to keep Ernesta guessing. 10 seconds to go. Oh. And again, a solid right hand lands for Ernesta. Spiteri ran right into that one. A nod of acknowledgement from both athletes, and we have got a fight in London. Chloe again, she looking noticeably tired. If you notice, some, in some of the exchanges, she's firing out her lead hand, but she's leaning her head to one side. And then when Ernesta gets close, she's pushing her away. That takes a lot of energy. If you imagine doing 50 bench presses in a fight, it's gonna make you tired. She needs to think about tidying up her techniques and putting them together. And more importantly, making them count when they do land. So we've got a compelling style matchup and certainly on the end of two rounds of very interesting action, all action, we continue into the third stanza here at Rise of the Champions. And the final three minutes have been put on the clock for this one, an amateur contest here at 63 kilograms. Spiteri from Team Titan looking to get that first win on her amateur record. Ernesta Bukaus Katie looking to make it 2 0. Chloe looking for the clinch, the right idea up against Cage, use the Cage to take it down, but she needs to think about disguising those. If they're too telegraphed, Ernesta will fire off at that range. See, she's pumping that jab out constantly. Ernesta always giving Chloe something to think about. And more importantly, Chloe. continuing to blitz in with spectacular techniques like that. And look at that beautiful long guard there to try and control the head of Spiteri when she charges in. But Spiteri did the right thing. The moment that Ernesta runs out of space with her back up against the wire, that's the time to close in hard. But right now, as both continue to move around in the middle of the ring, in what's been a glorified kickboxing bout now, I think that's really what Ernesta wants and what Spiteri would like to counter. Ernesta's so confident with her striking because that judo background, she's comfortable in those exchanges not to get taken down as quickly. That's why Chloe Spiteri needs to disguise her punches, not just single jabs like that. She needs to throw punches in bunches, move her head off the center line, just like that. Nice inside slip there from Spiteri to her right hand. And again, that's very smart, I like that. She sees the kick come and she doesn't charge in. Better evasion thus far from Spiteri, the best it's been in this fight to this point. Nice bit of head movement there from Chloe, but she's throwing singular shots. She needs to throw more than one shot down that pipe, perhaps go to the body, make the hands drop of Vanessa, because they're quite high, and she's able to do that because she's on the outside. Again, a good pair there from Spiteri. You've noted the hand fighting, and that's been an interesting feature of this contest in my mind, particularly when one of them goes southpaw. The open stance matchup often marked by a lot of hand fighting. Again, just like that, when Spinteri goes southpaw to try to set up the takedown, you see a lot of hand fighting. And this has got some blood coming out there of her left cheek. It could be from those, from those leaning right hands of Chloe. But she's happy again, she's happy on the outside to just fire that jab out. You see that, she moves, she circles off, she pivots off at an angle, so Chloe is left driving forward. 
And again, a nice right hand lands for Spiteria there in the exchange. But Chloe seems to be very wise to the game plan thus far, Spiteri. Excuse me, Ernesta. Ernesta, oh, Ernesta connected with a good left hand. Chloe coming in. But Ernesta is quite happy to be on the outside. She's not really eaten any decisive punches that have made her think twice. About coming in, nice right hand from Chloe. She needs more of that. If she stands on the outside there, look. Ernesta can fire off kicks at will. She's at that perfect range. And the end of the third and final round is upon us. Big round of applause here from the audience. And both corners, no doubt, happy with their fighters' performances. It's been an interesting contest, seeing a classic style matchup between a striker and a grappler. But when you think about the classic matchup, the reason why Ernesta was able to strike so decisively was because she was comfortable about not getting taken down. We saw up against the cage, she was able to square her hips off, widen her base and stop Chloe taking her down. Chloe, again, not disguising what she was doing, not throwing really any punches to make her Nesta think twice about throwing those beautiful kicks on the outside. We'll go to the judges, but I mean, in my mind, Ernesta has done enough striking on the outside. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to our judges' scorecards. To your winner, by split decision, in the blue corner, Ernesta Pukowskate.